Hey guys, all this is Vegan Gamer, playing Bayonetta. Alright, and we're going through this door right up here. I have to be careful and time it, because there's lava bursting in it. Ah, I guess I'm going to have to slow time. I'm going to use Witch Time. Find those. Alright. Activate. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Alright. Activate. Surfing the monster? <laughs> oh, that would have been cool. I would have liked seeing her surf the monster. Ah, very cool. Can I go back this way? No. Sometimes there's certain objects when you just go back. I'm gonna take this. Where am I supposed to go this time? Ow. Whoa, how awesome is that? I can't go back this way. Wait, no, no, I don't wanna get rid of this weapon. I should not do that. I should wait till those monsters. Old dancing Bayonetta. That is crazy. Oh, love is coming. I guess I'm gonna have to hurry. I don't like the angle. You guys can get better angle than this. Get gold. About the ember riches too. Uh, should I read those or not? I'm gonna wait to read those for the next video. Ooh, just gonna be action here. Can I lift those up? I guess not. Two of them. I like being behind them. Oh. It's only right now I'm not behind them. Thank <laughs> you. 
What was I shooting at though? Was I just like moving forwards with the Megatron? Megaton. Like spiraling and shooting forwards? <laughs> I just landed somewhere. Is there an object here? Aha! Hit an object, so it's always good to go back. That, that's good. I'm glad about that. Even though <laughs> I kind of rounded up touching them a lot. When you touch them, you kind of you lose points because they're out, they're out of fire. I guess you have to use your guns more, but it ends up taking longer killing them that way. I wonder what the final boss in this area is going to look like. Ooh, catacombs. Alright you guys, I'm going to save here. Tell you guys not to forget to save the animals, get some monsters but But before I leave, I'm going to read the book that I haven't read yet. And actually, I think I'm going to go get the other book and I'll read both books. And then I'll save. Alright. I'll wait, read the first one first. Then read this one. Wait, those are the monsters. I don't want to read that. I want to read what's related to the story. So... It must be Antonio's notebook. No, he has many, so it should be notebooks. Notes on the topic of magic tree. So you guys that don't want to listen to this, you can just watch the next video. And for you guys that do want to listen to this, well, I'm just going to read it out loud. And it helps me practice my English, so <laughs> that's kind of the part that I do for myself. Notes on the topic of magic tree. The magic arts of the Umbra. Their true significance is best understood in the context of how the Umbra were able to use this magic via direct contact with demons in Inferno. It is, duh, it is thought that these witches underwent strict training in order to master the various techniques. However, the truth is colored by the fact that the witches left people awestruck and were greatly revered. The true root of their power was none other than their ability to take unbelievable strong demon energy and bend it to their will, using it freely. The witch's direct contact saw them reaching into the heart of Inferno's darkness and summoning the beasts that dwell there, drawing out their incredible magic and destructive powers. The witches under contract with these demons were able to exercise powers far beyond any that could be obtained by mere mortals. To the extent that some, of, that some may even term these powers as aggressive or brutal. It was thanks to these powers that the witches boasted some awesome force in battle. From the Vigrantian religious perspective, those living in the human world find interaction with other realms to be incredibly difficult. Residents of Inferno also find it impossible to manifest themselves in the human world. This is why witches require some sort of catalyst to summon demons into the human world, channeling the spirit via this medium. 
The catalyst most often used by witches was their hair. It is well accepted that hair had many uses in the magical arts, and the witches called this use of their own hair the wicked weave, which I've already used. I have like a big giant dog. <laughs> it was said to have been used not just to summon demons, but also to summon magical items, as well as forming the witches' uniforms. It would also like to touch briefly on the despair these women must have felt to gain the incredible power afforded to them. They were forced to trade their souls to the demons of Inferno. Within the trinity of realities, it is believed that the deceased find their souls sent to heaven in an endless circle of birth, death, and rebirth. However, witches were met with only a single possible fate, death followed by endless torment and inferno. Once one had set foot upon this path of magic arts, there lay nothing but the harsh reality that there is no tor turning back. Okay, so I'm kind of forced to be tortured because they decided to use that magic. Uh, despite this fact, it was a path desired by a never-ending stream of believers. How these women captured so many hearts, minds, and imaginations remains unknown. It's because they're extremely beautiful, obviously. What's this book? About the Imbra Witches, part 2. Imbra Witches, controllers of the dark power, the ways of their discipline were actually quite varied. Breathing, movement, medicine, and tactics were joined in the Middle Ages by training in the operation of heavy weapons culminating in a curriculum whose total breadth and intensity are hard to ascertain. This training, forged both by the body and the soul, owning each witch into a vessel capable of withstanding the vigors of magic arts, and allowing one to begin to interact with other dwellers of the magic realm. This interaction with the world of spirit lies in the very core of magic. To put these dwellers of the magic realm into layman's terms, they most closely fit the common conception of demons, developing demon-like powers. It seems this was one of the reasons these women were burdened with the sad fate, always living in history's shadows. I have been able to gain no further solid information regarding the magical arts. As the witch clan has long since been annihilated, in their memory forgotten, the residents of this town detest them with all their hearts. To allude to their existence is quite the taboo, yet the key to unlocking the witch's mysteries still remains. In Vigrid, the man held up by many to be paragon of fate continues to seek out any remaining witches. Are the witches, once thought to be wiped from the earth, still among us? If they are, how have they survived this long? What do they now know? <laughs> and where on earth could they be hiding? Finally, I have obtained scraps of a document that appears to lay out another elementary principle of the magical arts. I am unable to decipher the writing on the document, but it seems to describe a material arts technique known as Dodge Offset. I pray it will be used to someone, will be of use to someone, so I have included it within these notes. Alright. And we're done with the reading, the awkward reading. <laughs> and I'm gonna go save it over here. Alright guys, see you later.